Yo Joe, my friends, Jared here from Fanboys Forever with another review. And today we're going to be looking at the Amazon exclusive Arctic Mission Storm Shadow, or as I like to call him, Ninja Force Leader Storm Shadow. But we'll get into that a little bit later. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at Storm Shadow. So before going into too much detail about this particular Storm Shadow, I think it's probably worth noting that this wasn't exactly the first Storm Shadow release that people had in mind from Hasbro when it comes to their G.I. Joe classified line. I think a whole lot of folks were hoping for something along these lines, only in 6 inch form. But that's not what we got. Instead, we got this. And this Storm Shadow is not based on that original Storm Shadow release, or Ultimate Storm Shadow, whatever you want to call them. Very much inspired by the old Ninja Force Leader Storm Shadow. And I know it's not necessarily this one. This was a repaint that was meant to resemble that old original. This is meant to represent that. And I think what's really funny about it is that a lot of people were left scratching their heads who didn't know much about the original vintage line. But at the same time, the people who did know the vintage line really well were also kind of scratching their heads because at that point in the story, Storm Shadow is a member of G.I. Joe, not actually Cobra at all. So it is funny that this is the first release that we got, and I never would have guessed in a million years that we would have been getting a six inch remake of the old version three Storm Shadow from, uh, from G.I. Joe that was actually the leader of Ninja Force. So let's go ahead and crack this guy open. And like with all the other classified releases, if you want to keep the box, you totally can and open it up without much of any damage to the packaging. So he's totally resealable in there. So I kind of have some mixed feelings on the card art. I think it is really cool looking, uh, especially from like an animated, like a cartoon perspective. But I don't think it really matches what they've did before with any of the other card art. Uh, I think that this is just maybe a little too animated looking, but I think that that's in with keeping with the varying styles that they've done for all of the different artworks so far. And I really like this because it kind of has more of an Asian flair to it, especially with the neat kind of wind patterns that they have in here. And it's really cool art, but the other artwork so far has been more on the painted side and a little more on the kind of uh, pseudo realistic kind of side. So I still think that this is really cool. And I think that we're gonna get a great variety of artists and artwork as the line goes on or maybe that this more animated style won't look nearly as out of place, say two years from now the line as it does right now. So uh, still a cool choice and very representative of the figure. So first things first, let's have a look at some of the sculpting going on with this Storm Shadow. I'll go ahead and remove his bow and the quiver in the back and we'll look at those accessories in just a minute. Uh, going from top to bottom, I really like this sculpt detail that we have happening with the mask. Matter of fact, we can see that they have this really nicely sculpted hood right here. And if we want to, we can actually remove that hood right off of the figure. It slips right off, but it's not so loose. Uh, under it, we have all this texturing work going on on the head sleeve right here. And it's really, really cool because it kind of has more of this armored texture to it. I really like that, how the light catches it and it's not just a smooth surface. Uh, we also have some really gnarly sculpting around the eyes right here. He looks kind of uh, angry, sort of that crazy uh, Arashikage determination going on here. And speaking of Arashikage, we actually have the Arashikage uh, symbol down in gold. And the same with these straps up here. Kind of looks like Saiyan armor straps from Dragon Ball Z. On the back, we can see that they really outdid themselves on some of this sculpting back here. It looks incredibly detailed for uh, it's kind of an area that would probably usually be neglected. There's all sorts of gold paint work back here. And you even have the snow pattern that continues. So I think that's really cool. Also on the front, we have kind of a complex kind of plates going on here. And the same for these shoulder pads right here. Uh, everything has an incredible amount of detail to it, especially on the abdomen here where it almost looks like kind of a machinery sort of look. You can even see some bolts where it looks like the armor has been bolted together, which is fantastic. Then over here on the sides, on the arms, it actually is almost like an armor piece, kind of cuffs over. Some really nice uh, detailing on the elbows, and all of it just continues beautifully. Up here on the shoulder pads, we kind of have a similar thing going on. 
So I really just love the amount of detail that we have in that area. Even on this like sash piece, like kind of this loincloth kind of look in the front, lots of great detail. There's pouches all over the belt as if he's got all sorts of gadgets in there, like a, having a Batman moment for Storm Shadow here. <laughs> on the back, the detailing continues with all this great work in the fabric. Looks fantastic. And then this can sort of be moved a little bit, so you can sort of raise it up. And if you want to see more of the detail for the pants, but this is kind of, you know, they knew this area wouldn't be seen as much, so there's not really much going on there. On the sides, it does kind of look like a slight uh, raising detail, almost like an armor panel. And then on the back, it's sort of the same as the front. They knew there wouldn't be as much uh, seen there, so there's not much detailing. On the legs, we do get some cool knee pads. Just, and then there's these shin guards, and they go to the trouble of making sure that these straps are actually painted across, and it's not just a generic color. On the back, we can see where the armor joins up. Uh, I would imagine this area is probably supposed to be black, I would think, like in this opening area. But that's it's just a hunch. I would think that that's what it would be because it's just a covering for the black boots underneath. Then we have boots that give him the flexibility of his main toe so that he can sneak around a little bit. On the bottoms, there really isn't too much going on, but we do have a couple of lines there just to give some sort of detail on the bottom of the feet. But overall, I think the sculpting is extremely impressive on this guy. And I have to hand it to Hasbro because they really went all out. Now here's an interesting question. Is, in terms of sculpt, is this just the standard Storm Shadow sculpt that they're going to be using for the regular Storm Shadow on the line? And this is just a repaint with a few extra parts. I mean, I don't know. I think it's possible. I think that that could be what we're looking at here. There's not, at the time of making this video, there's not any kind of official look, but I think that this is more of just an alternate deco that pays homage to that original V3 Storm Shadow. So I think that that's what we're maybe looking at here, but I absolutely love it. They did a fantastic job. I will say that you never quite know what you're gonna get with G.I. Joe Classified when it comes to paint work. I've had some really great paint first try, and I've had some paint that was really off, and it looks like it worked out really well. Everything looks really straight and nicely done. So uh, definitely no major paint issues here. Uh, I know that most of it is representative of just the color of the plastic that they use. And my, it's not just my camera picking it up that way. This is indeed not a pure white. This is more of a yellowish off white. And I actually like that decision a lot. I think a lot of the time the pure white is a little boring to look at for a figure. So this is a very articulated figure, much like a lot of the others in the classified line. So to get the full range out of the head, you might need to remove the hood, but you can still get plenty of range with it on. With the hood on, you can still get it pretty far back and kind of to the side, and the hood just kind of lays as a separate piece like that. You can even get it pretty far out, and it really doesn't hinder that at all. So really, there's not much of a reason to remove the hood, to be honest. But of course, without it, you can get a little more range. And then we have the abdomen joint. It kind of is a little loose this way. Do you guys see this? This is something that they really need to address with the articulation. It, it still works fine, but you know, when you're putting him in different poses, he can go from this to if he's not supported correctly, he slumps over. So that's a little frustrating. It ratchets. So if you don't want it to do that, you can kind of work with that and kind of get it in the pose you like, but there's still too much range in those ratchets. There should be many, many, many more ratchets so that you don't have so much of this wobbly nature to it. Hopefully that's something that they're going to address as the line goes on. Uh, in conjunction with that ratchet and the diaphragm, the actual waist is not only a swivel, but it is a full on rotating joint. So there's kind of a ball joint connection in the waist there. Uh, so you can use that in conjunction with that ratchet and the diaphragm that you hear clicking. And you can get just about whatever you want, but you're going to run into some problems with this number right here. But still, I think a lot of other people were having similar issues with uh, their snake eyes. All right, moving on to the arms. These are really interesting because of these shoulder pads. Now, in the case of a lot of six inch figures, you would think that these shoulder pads were pretty much the death of a full range of motion, but they're really not here. And this is kind of hard to show on video, but I'm gonna do my best. These are independent of the arm. They are not sculpted to it. So I can leave the arm there and look, 
you can see it in there kind of just moving around you can swivel this any which way it is a floating piece on the inside and i have to say that that's pretty advanced level stuff for a mass market six inch toy especially a 20 dollars one and i think they're really going in the right direction with this because it kind of reminds me of some of the japanese import figures like a common rider and things that actually have that floating joint but without being so finicky and without being so precious uh, about the durability so i really like that and using that you can get pretty much just a full range look at how it rotates around as a floating piece it can go any which direction so nothing is inhibited about that part of the articulation now if you want to keep it in a nat natural looking pose with the shoulder pad where it should be and line it up i mean this is about what you can get in terms of range we do get a cut just a rotation right there at the bicep we also get double joints on our elbows and man it's a great double joint just like snake eyes and then we get a hinge right here in the hand and it is an up and down hinge you can go down about that much and up that much moving on down we remember can move this up and down so it gets out of the way of articulation really easily especially because these are drop down hips and i love the drop down hips in the classified line because once again they remind me of those japanese import figures you can drop the hips all the way down here to where you can get kicks that are way up and they go beyond the 90 degree mark that's only possible with a drop down design like that and then you can just push them back into place into those sockets if you want them to have the normal range and then put that back down and what's great is that because of the uh, loincloth piece if you will you kind of get more hiding of that drop down because look what happens i can drop that down and you're never really going to notice it too much so it looks even more natural with this floating piece here kind of hiding that and by the way speaking of that floating piece it's completely rotatable and i'm sure that any kind of customizer could probably heat this up pop off the legs and then take this piece off if they just wanted them in the black pants next up we do have a cut right here rotates all the way around if you pull the legs down you can get full-on splits like a ninja should be able to and then we have a double joint at the knee and it goes quite a ways now the only uh, part that might be a little bit negative here is that this is totally white these pieces so it breaks the illusion quite a bit when you have the knee flexing because there's these big white kind of marks but i think that's to be expected because this is all molded in one color this piece so i don't know if there was a better way to handle that but it is a little noticeable when you do that on down here the there isn't any kind of cut at the boot but there is plenty of rotation in this awesome ankle pivot down here look at this you can do all sorts of stuff i mean this thing can practically turn around inhumanly and then it goes down an incredible amount and it goes up pretty good but it goes down much 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 more and that means that you can get the widest stances you can possibly imagine and still have him hold them you can get things like that and he can just hold it no problem so i mean it's pretty great i have to say that's an incredible amount of range and i think that uh you know some people are a little mad that hasbro's not including display stands with these and i'm a little disappointed too because i would love modern six inch versions of joe display stands and i think that's something they need to include but at the same time part of the reason that old gi joe's used to have display stands is because sometimes they could have a little bit of difficulty standing on their own in certain poses and you know i these guys even without a display stand they're going to hold just about whatever pose you put them in they're very well balanced as well let's look at some of his accessories we're going to start with his rashikage sword here take that out and we see the logo right there there's the silver paint not just one solid color and then i really like and it's kind of hard to show because it's just pure white i really like the weave like sculpt pattern on this feels really interesting kind of like a wicker almost uh, for the sheath here and of course this can be plugged into the hole on the back I almost hate to cover up how ornate that is back there because that's really nice especially with the gold and everything and then looks really great i think he just cuts a nice silhouette with that in the back so that looks really cool another accessory that he comes with is this quiver full of gold arrows and i really like that the rashkage logo is actually in gold 
and the arrows aren't just flat gold either. They actually have the actual tops of the arrows that wouldn't be gold. So it looks really, really terrific. You can plug that right in the back, just like we did the sheath for the sword. And just like with the sheath, this also cuts a really nice silhouette. And then we have the actual bow that he comes with. This thing is awesome. I love how the gold looks with the black on this release. I think they really knew what they were doing when they were contrasting those out. We can get that in the hand, but these hands are, it's kind of tough to force this in there, but thankfully the fingers are pretty movable, so you can just kind of flex it in, and you don't really have a lot of fear of it breaking necessarily. And sometimes the thumb needs to be positioned, but there we go. So he looks particularly great. And unfortunately, none of the gold arrows come out of the quiver. I think that would have been asking quite a bit. But instead of having the gold arrows come out of the quiver, we do get a single cast in white arrow right here. So at least he has that. It's funny that it doesn't match anything else in the quiver. Well, maybe this is the one that he keeps, maybe for a special mission. Maybe this is... Uh, the Rambo arrow, the one that explodes. So there we go. <laughs> he can only sort of hold it before it droops down, but you can balance it and kind of get it where it needs to be. Keep in mind that with this hand sculpt, the fingers are kind of open, like uh, to shoot it, to fire maybe a gun of some sort. So you could probably take this arrow and put it between the fingers, no problem. And see, it actually holds in there really, really nicely. Another interesting accessory that Storm Shadow includes is this kind of ice pick right here. And you can look at this in a few different ways. Either you can look at this as a ninja bladed weapon, or since this is the Arctic Storm Shadow, you could look at it as an ice pick. I think either way, it looks super cool. So I absolutely love this thing. I just wish that he came with two of them so that you could hold one upright and then one upside down. You get some great posing that way, I think. You get this cool grappling hook and you can see that you can just unwind this thing and it goes pretty long to 12 inches or so maybe 13. so you can take this and if you want him to he can hold the grappling hook like this or of course you could tie this around his wrist and swim around like tarzan so uh, there's definitely some fun options for this i really like that he comes with a grappling hook i think that's terrific especially if he's in the arctic and he's climbing up mountains and things of that nature and here's an example of some of the cool posing that you can get with these accessories uh, you know, you can get him doing all sorts of things. It, in times like this, you just wish that he had like eight hands so that he could hold everything all at once. But it looks really great, especially when you start mixing and matching the weapons. And in terms of scale, we'll have a look at a few comparisons. We'll start with the tallest of the new figures. We have the classified roadblock here from Series 1. And he is much taller than Storm Shadow, as he should be. Uh, you can see that Destro is still quite a bit taller. He's probably about a quarter inch taller. And of course, another scale comparison we can do is the super secret Sergeant Slaughter figure that Hasbro released only for me. I'm just kidding. Uh, it is a custom that I did right here on the channel. So if you want to check that out, of course, uh, you can look at the link below and you can check out my Sergeant Slaughter custom and how you can make your very own. But yes, I do believe Sarge should be towering over all the other G.I. Joe characters. I think they look pretty cool together. And Duke and Storm Shadow are just about eye to eye, I would say. The hood makes his head appear a little bit taller than Duke's, but it's really an illusion from the hood. Next up, we have Snake Eyes. I kind of like it when Snake Eyes is represented to be a little bit shorter. Uh, and I, that might be just me, you know, having memories of Ray Park playing the character and him being kind of a shorter actor. I kind of like that for some reason. And here, it appears as though he's just about the same height, but like I said with Duke, it does seem that the hood does uh, obfuscate that just a little bit. I don't know about you, I'm really not gonna be displaying him without the hood. I've seen several people uh, display him without the hood, and I think it's because they're wanting more of a classic Storm Shadow, but I'm sorry, Ninja Force leader Storm Shadow and my head, I mean, this is how he looks. He, he doesn't not have the hood. The original vintage toy has the hood sculpted onto the head, so I can't do that. Then we go to the shortest figure. We have Scarlet here, and they still look really, really nice together. I really like how Classified is handling scale because even though there's quite a bit of variance between characters, nobody ever looks like totally out of place. It always feels justified. 
Now, something I was curious about when they first announced this figure is I was wondering, I thought, well, I know that this is really supposed to be Ninja Force leader Storm Shadow, and that version of Storm Shadow is not a member of Cobra. So I thought, okay, are they gonna like go ahead and sculpt Cobra emblems all over him and kind of make the figure itself very Cobra-esque? The answer is no. I think that the designers at Hasbro were pretty careful about that because I think that they realized surely more than anyone that what they're doing is they're remaking the hero version of Storm Shadow. Even though for marketing purposes and branding purposes, there's that Cobra logo on the box. This is the heroic G.I. Joe version. People who want a Cobra Storm Shadow can go ahead and just say that it is him and he's just on an Arctic mission. But for older fans like me who remember that original toy line, you're probably just gonna say that he is the Ninja Force leader reformed Storm Shadow who has made up with Snake Eyes and they're back in the fight together. At least that's the way I'm going with it. But hey, your mileage may vary. So to end the review, what are my final thoughts on Storm Shadow? Well, I think the final pose that I chose for the ending segment of this review kind of says it all to me. This Storm Shadow to me is something very specific that I'm not even sure that Hasbro is really even promoting it to be at this point. To me, this Storm Shadow is a straight up remake of the V3 version of Storm Shadow. And when you think about that original line, a Storm Shadow's redemption happened in like the early 90s. So it is really funny that Storm Shadow's time in Cobra is really what defines him, but it's understandable because it was the classic era of three and three quarters G.I. Joe, when really he was a member of G.I. Joe and the leader of Ninja Force uh, in the early 90s. So I think that that Cobra identity kind of went away after a while. But I think that since this was the first Storm Shadow figure, for some reason that they released, uh, they were sure to emblazon that Cobra logo on the back and you know they were wanted to have that kind of brand recognition for him but i think it is really odd that they chose to do this because it makes people like me like hardcore fans of gi joe i'm thrilled to death i think this is the greatest thing ever like i can't believe that they did this i was trying to wait till the end to geek out over this but seriously like guys they remade v3 storm shadow the Ninja Force Leader Storm Shadow. And he's a figure that you can get from Amazon. I think that's kind of neat. I really do. And shoot, we'll add, we'll add Scarlet too because she was also a member of Ninja Force in the early 90s. So to have him tap into that early 90s kind of energy of G.I. Joe without them picking, you know, one of the characters in the crazy neon colors or something like that, I really like that energy from the brand. And I think it's getting a little more popular with the hardcore collectors over the years. So I just think that this is so cool that they decided to do this. But does that mean that the figure is perfect? No, it doesn't. There's always been this kind of wobble up here, but it's much more prominent, at least on my sample, with Storm Shadow, like much more prominent. This thing should be a little bit tighter. It shouldn't be so wobbly up here. But other than that, I really don't have any other complaints about the figure. I think he comes with a very appropriate amount of accessories. I think he uh, has his paint applications are fantastic. This kind of like snow camo pattern right here. I think that combined with the other gold flourishes that we get are great. Very little slop on the figure. Had one little spot right here, which is easily correctable, by the way. This isn't a Moffex. This isn't a Metacom. This isn't anything like that. This is a $20 mass retail figure that happens to include a ton of really nice, highly detailed accessories. And I think that if you're looking for a classical representation of Storm Shadow and you are as well versed in Joe as I am, uh, I think that you can't go wrong with this. On the other hand, if you are looking, see, I just continue to just tinker with them. I've got Ninja Force going right here, guys. <laughs> but if you're like 90% uh, probably uh, the other collectors out there who are looking for a straight up Cobra representation of the character, like the classic cartoon and toy line, something that looks like this, you know, this isn't it. But I will caution you, usually with these exclusives, we all know what happens. If you're as wobbly as his diaphragm joint <laughs> on getting him right now, then chances are you probably just need to go ahead because this is a cool figure. I'm not 100% sure why they didn't release the other Storm Shadow first. This is so neat, and I'm glad that there's retailers like Amazon who are willing to say, yes, we'll take that as our exclusive, 
because I'm not sure if a version like this would have happened any other way. I want to encourage Hasbro to keep going with these kinds of exclusives, especially for us vintage collectors who absolutely eat up stuff like this. And I'm very appreciative that they kind of threw us a bone with this one. So guys, I can't thank you enough for watching my review today. It means the world to us here at Fanboys Forever. Remember, we are trying to get up to 1,000 subscribers and we are almost there. So any help with that would be greatly appreciated and it's all we ask. So guys, we thank you so much. And remember, be safe out there. God bless. And I'll see you next time on Fanboys Forever. Later. Later.